of cruising the canals of Venice has always been your dream, you could say it's something precious to you, like a diamond. Well, if Venice is a diamond, then the region of northern Italy where it's located, Veneto, is a treasure chest full of hidden gems. Thanks to my friend Noemi, I had the opportunity to visit Veneto for a week and see some of the lesser known hidden gems of this treasure chest. We went to so many beautiful places you would never see if you just stayed in Venice. So without further ado, let's explore Veneto. <laughs> this is a river and it is called Muzon de Sassi. This bridge is called Ophelia and it starts from Trezzo and arrives to Padma. So it's long? Yes. Is that where we're going? I <laughs> That's where he's going. Okay, we've made it. So, Noemi, can you explain where you're taking me? Yes. So, this is a cable park. I think it's the third biggest in Italy. Grab um, the cable and go ahead. Try not to fall. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen this sport before. I've seen people on the back of boats with cables, but this park has a cable line that's constantly running, and so you just grab onto the line and hang on for dear life. So this guy's coming around. Let's see if he does something cool. Okay. Spinning the board, nice. Is he going for it? Oh! Nailed it. Driving through the countryside in Veneto is a worthwhile experience in and of itself. Whoa, okay, maybe I should drive. If you keep your eye out, you'll see beautiful villas dotting the landscape, most likely inspired by Venetian Renaissance architect Andrea Palladio. Palladio is considered one of the most influential architects in history, whose Palladian villas found throughout the Veneto region are almost all UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Speaking of famous Venetians, Andrea Palladio is just one name on the roster of many famous people from the Veneto. Some other standout names include Amy Adams, Casanova, Marco Polo, and Antonio Vivaldi, just to name a few. While you're in Veneto, there's two drinks you need to try, Prosecco and Grappa. Prosecco is a sparkling white wine only produced in this part of northern Italy. Unlike its French counterpart Champagne, Prosecco ferments in tanks instead of the bottle, making it lighter and less expensive. And what better place to drink Prosecco than the Prosecco Hills, another UNESCO World Heritage Site. I'm starting to think they're biased towards Italy. But anyways, you could visit the town of Valdobiadene, the Machu Picchu of wine, to sit amongst the beautiful rolling hills of grape orchards and enjoy Prosecco. Okay, so this is a sketchy parking job, but we are in Valdobbiadene. We are literally in 
Vite. We're in a vineyard, literally <laughs> in a vineyard. <laughs> exactly. We don't even have to go into the restaurant. We can just eat the grapes here. <laughs> okay, she's hungry. She wants to go in the restaurant. <laughs> so if we can get out, um, we'll meet you in the restaurant. So this place is called Osteria Senzoste. So you can go in and pick what you want to eat. They have charcuterie type of stuff, cheese, meat. The typical uh, simple food. So we have cheese type of meat. I think it's like pancetta. These are typical bread. It is called bibanese and wine prosecco. So when you get here, you pick what you want out of the fridge or out of the basket in the store and you bring it, cut it yourself, eat, enjoy, and then before you leave, you pay. It's done on the honor system, so there's nobody there making sure you pay for everything before you go, and it's all cash-based. The cheese was six euros, the meat was four, the bread two, and the wine seven. And then we had to pay for the glass too, which was one. So in total, 20 euros. So now you know where to go for Prosecco, but what about Grappa? Well, why not take a day trip to Bassano del Grappa to try the grape based brandy? You can go for the Grappa or just sit and relax by the river and enjoy the views of the town's iconic covered bridge, another design by Andrea Palladio. In the hills not too far from Bassano del Grappa is the city of a hundred horizons, Asolo. It makes a nice day trip to come and explore this quaint medieval town and get a drink, have a bite to eat, or climb to the fortress at its peak. About an hour outside of Vardo Biadene is Treviso, where we currently are. We are in the main plaza here in Treviso. What's it called? Noemi? Piazza dei Signori. This is a beautiful town. The architecture is amazing. I feel like I'm in Italy. I just want to do this with my hands. <laughs> so everybody comes to Vene the Veneto region for Venice, which is the most well-known city here. But there's a ton of these hidden gems all throughout the region, like Treviso, Vodo Biadone, Castel Franco, which is a cool town we went to last night, and like Treviso right now. This is just a really cute, cool city. There's people out enjoying the night. It's got nice architecture, the Capella, Duomo. This is the dome. The dome. So this town is really cool because it's not just architecture and culture. There's also shopping, restaurants, cafes. Um, is that Timothy Chalamet? Oh. And gelaterias. Gelateria? No, that's Spanish. Gelaterie. Gelaterie. This one is Gelaterie Romana. Five out of five. It's a hundred percent. Now we've made it to Fontana delle Tete. I know that's backwards, but Fontana delle Tete is exactly what it sounds like. So the fountain that we just saw was a remake. Here's the original. Unfortunately, you know, with the years, things tend to fall. You know how it goes. So with all this just around the corner, it doesn't make sense to only stay in Venice. Yes, visit Venice, but don't let yourself miss out on all there is to do and see in Veneto. Thanks for watching, and until the next one, give travel. Bye, guys. 
cosa? Mi serve aiuto. Perché? Signora. Eh. Non sono slackman. <laughs> Parliamo sì. inglese. Ok. I'm not a slackman. Ok. E uh, wha, oh, who are you? Darby Hart. <laughs>